Hello Pisces. In this video, a five card tarot spread for the sign of Pisces, looking into just about every area of life. Uh, this is January 2020, uh, but this reading really is for the year ahead of 2020. Uh, the energy is changing a lot. The universe is really changing its relationship towards us quite a bit as well. Or is it us changing our relationship towards the universe? Who can say? But the solar system is moving from one part of space into another part of space where it's nothing like as much protected as it was before. That means that we're very much standing on our own two feet, but we are actually also... Without that protection, it's not going to be easy, but we are actually coming into our own, coming into the people that we're meant to be. That's the positive thing. So I've got Tarot in Wonderland here, my deck of choice, which has proved very popular with you guys. And uh, so here we go. What have we got for the first card out in this reading for the sign of Pisces in 2020? And it's number 13. It's the death card. Lucky for some, unlucky for others. Well, maybe, but I just decided it was going to be lucky for me. And so far, it always has been. Now, Alice here is blowing out the candle. Um, and in blowing the candle out, she hasn't entirely left herself in the dark, you see, because the turquoise light of truth is still shining through. And she probably couldn't see that when the candle was lighting up her whole space. So there's smoke everywhere. And uh, there's going to be a lot of change going on when that happens. Now, when we get smoke in any, well, in a dream particularly, as someone kindly pointed out to me the other day, uh, it tends to mean that there's something hidden. And I don't feel that this is something hidden in a bad way Pisces I feel very strongly actually uh, that the truth has been hidden from us for a long time and uh, 2020 in fact really the next decade actually is about massive changes coming in so uh, this is all about starting off on the right foot by saying goodbye to what no longer serves you what isn't helping you what isn't actually doing you any good uh, Alice looks a little bit sort of puzzled as she's doing this and I've no doubt that uh, she's wondering has she actually done the right thing and of course she has because the energy of this card is all about death of the old self, birth of the new. Well, I, you know, I think that's more to do with death of the old ways and birth of the new ways, because we are always the selves that we are. We're sent into this world to be ourselves for a string of very good reasons, actually, uh, all of which are worked out before we actually come to the Earth plane. And so there's absolutely nothing wrong with looking ahead and looking forward and... To make that happen really, really successfully, we've got to blow out the flame of the old candle. It's been sustaining us. It's done its job. Now we've got to move on. Now we've got to be ourselves. That's what really matters. Okay, so let's move on and say what's the next card in this five-card spread for the sign of Pisces in January of 2020. New year, new decade. And we've got the King of Wands. Here he is. So wand energy, that's uh, really about fire signs. So it's Leo, excuse me, it's Leo, it's Sagittarius and it's Aries around you. And uh, maybe those things within you, within your birth chart as well. Uh, if you haven't had a birth chart done, it's really well worth doing. So uh, do look into that. All the big astrological websites will do you a birth chart if you want. Uh, I tend to use A-L-A-B-E dot com. That's my favourite, but there are so many of them. There really are. You can choose one that suits you. And uh, whatever comes in a birth chart, the information ought to be the same between all the different ones. You know, because uh, we are actually dealing with ancient truths, things that have been observed for thousands of years. And uh, the King of Wands is no doubt aware of many of those ancient truths because uh, he is an, an elderly gentleman in this picture and he's learned a lot of interesting skills during his life, not the least of which is being able to balance a needle on his nose and that's not an easy thing. Now, I like this card a lot, right, because I've been to the town where Lewis Carroll was when he wrote the Alice in Wonderland stories and there's a pub there called The Balancing Eel and uh, the sign for it actually looks a little bit like this card. I wonder how that's got into the deck. Dunno, but it has somehow. Anyway, he's got his crown off, so he's willing to be a happy person. He's, he's willing not to stand on ceremony. He's willing not to be formal. He is the king of wands, so he's about getting things done. And uh, he will give you good information if you uh, approach this character. And uh, so there's bound to be good information coming in when we get that card coming in. That's positive, very helpful, very forward-looking and forward-thrusting, you might even say. 
But the thing about the King of Wands is he's a good teacher. And what I mean by that is he doesn't tell you everything. He leaves you to work some of it out yourself. So you won't have all the information yet, at least, because this is the beginning of a new decade. So uh, there's plenty of time for it to come in. And uh, the great thing about that is a, a real good teacher won't tell you the whole thing. Because when you work it out for yourself, it sticks in your mind more. It makes more sense to you. And it becomes a sort of personal learning experience rather than just being fed information. And uh, that can be frustrating because if you're anything like me, you'd like to have all the information before you go off trying to sort everything out. But life just is not like that, friends, I'm afraid. I wish it was more like that than it really is. But uh, anyway, uh, the thing is, there is a lot of fun going on in this card. He is being quite an entertainer there. So this is very positive energy, really. And it's a happy way to start the journey of learning. But it is starting the journey of learning rather than getting all the answers at once. Well, life would be dull, wouldn't it, if we were just sort of born and got all the answers and then, you know, what would we spend the rest of our lives doing? I don't know. Life is change and life is learning, though. So uh, that's something to celebrate, really. OK, let's move on and ask for the next card. And this is going to be the heart of the matter, really, in this five-card spread for the sign of Pisces. I hope you had a good festive season, by the way, Pisces. It's left me a bit ragged, to be honest, and I think it's left most people a bit ragged. But uh, here we are getting on with life again. That's positive, and uh, that's what really matters, is it not? So what is, please, the third card, the middle card, the heart of the matter in this five-card spread for the sign of Pisces in 2020? Whoop, one jumped out there, and it is the Page of Pentacles. There he is. Now, the page energy is always a bit inexperienced and always needs some input from you. So this is kind of the other side of the King of Wands who doesn't give you all the information. This time, uh, even though you haven't got all the information, you've got to give some of the information you've got to the Page of Pentacles in order to actually make things happen. This is Earth sign energy, very strongly Pisces. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. So do get yourself grounded along the journey here. Just visualise those roots going down into the Earth and keeping you steady and strong and safe. Uh, because the page here is actually one of the more um, charismatic of the pages, even though he's young and uh, inexperienced. He's very kind of common sense uh, page, is this character. And uh, because he's the page of pentacles, we're looking at all the energies, earth, wind, fire and water, coming together under the guidance of the divine. And he's out in nature there, is he not? Let me take a closer look at this and see what we're looking at. I thought there were... There are many sandwiches lying on the ground. I'm not quite sure what the significance of those is. But uh, my intuition tells me that uh, this is going to be a sandwich of an experience, really. He is the middle card in this reading. So uh, it's about bringing different ingredients together in order to make something fairly simple, uh, which sustains us on our journey and keeps us going. He is far from home, but he's practical. He's got his sandwiches there with him. And uh, because it's the Pentacles card, it's looking to me like money is going to be OK here. Um, but, you know, we're out in nature there. And if you can get out into nature, that is far and away uh, one of the most important places you can go to do meditation. Um, any kind of meditative practice is really good if it happens around the heart of our lives. So, you know, nothing wrong at all with doing it in the home. I do it all the time. But if you can get somewhere nearer to nature, that's the main thing. And we should remember our human nature as well when this card comes up, because we come to this world equipped with everything we need. We just don't know what it is yet. The King of Wands isn't telling us, and uh, the Page of Pentacles can actually help us along that journey very significantly, but it takes some, income, uh, some input from us. Income is always nice, but it takes some input from us, and uh, takes some intuition going on as well. But since we've got earth, fire, air, and water working together under the guidance of the divine, we have actually got a lot of potential there. So, this is great. I'm not seeing any problems in this. The death card looks a tiny bit scary at the beginning there for this. But then, you know, death always does look that tiny bit scary, if not a lot scary. It's a big thing. Uh, it's a big change coming in there, obviously. But uh, let's just go back to that one, card number one a second. Look at the turquoise light shining in that card. That is the truth, and it's coming through the smoke. It's revealing what is hidden, and uh, that's what life's journey is all about. 
So really positive, I feel, my friends. Right, let us move on and say, what is the fourth card, please, in this five card spread for the sign of Pisces in January 2020? Here we go. It's the Queen of Wands. There she is. Now, she is not a character to be messed with, not at all. Again, it's a, a reminder of the fire signs. This is the, uh, the second fire sign card we've had in the spread. So this is important. It's about the fire of progress as much as anything. And uh, Leo, Sagittarius and Aries, where are they in your birth chart? What do they mean to you? Are those people around you? Is one of those signs someone close to you? It's worth thinking about. We've got anarchy in matters of love. That's just something that my spirit guides seem to have attached to this card. It doesn't say it in the book about it or anything like that. And uh, it's certainly not a normal meaning for the Queen of Wands, but that's what it's come to mean uh, to me. And I've seen that, that that actually taking effect in the various private readings that I do. And if you'd like a private reading, by the way, 35and83 at gmail.com. That's 35and83 at gmail.com. And for a small fee, I would be very, very happy to read for you. And I do mean a small fee as well, not greedy. And who sh we shouldn't be greedy, really, because as the black cat reminds us here, a big part of the spiritual picture of what's going on with any of us is given freely by the divine and is coming from the psychic realms, the spiritual realms, the outer universe, really. And uh, through this year and really through the next decade, this uh, the whole solar system is getting further out uh, into a place where the universe can really play itself out in our lives. So this is ever so positive. Uh, the Queen of Wands is just not to be messed with, you know. There's absolutely no putting one over on her. And we've got to get our story straight. And uh, the good news is we will, because this card has come up a little bit further on in the journey. We've had the King of Wands advising us. We've had the Page of Pentacles drawing it out of us, really, and making us more aware of what's changing in our own lives. And now we come to the Queen of Wands. And we start to know roughly where we're going. Uh, we never get total certainty about where we're going or what we're doing. Because if we did, life just wouldn't be the same thing that it's really meant to be. It wouldn't be the positive, powerful force that it really is in our lives. So remember, life is change. Change is coming in in a big way. We started off with the death card there. And that means this is a whole new journey, does it not? Okay, that leads us to the outcome card then. So I'll have a shuffle again, a tarot in Wonderland, and see what we've got for an outcome card. Here we go, and it's this one. It's the ones again, fire sign energy again, Leo, Sag, Arius. Uh, Arius, that's because I said Sag first. Leo, Sagittarius, and Aries, the fire signs. Fast moving progress here. Uh, the Eight of Wands is just about the fastest moving progress we get in the tarot deck. But this is really caning it. This is the Seven of Wands and this really shows that things are happening. But there's a battle going on and it's not a futile battle at all. The people who are battling Alice are fighting uh, a really futile battle for themselves though because they're not going to win. Alice is you, and Alice is where you're going with this. And uh, what Alice has really got to do, as we can see there, is just hold her ground. She's standing up on a table. No one else is, but she's, uh, she's still sort of beneath things a bit there. But she's going to fight her way to the top. We just know she is, because she's standing on a purple tablecloth, showing the healing coming in, and she's surrounded by playing cards as well, telling us that it's absolutely all to play for. The Eight of Wands in this deck has playing cards of which you can only see the back and that means in, in that situation as with other cards in the tarot uh, there isn't so much of a game going on and things are more of a racing certainty well the racing certainty here only comes in if you stand your ground and battle your way through whatever's ahead of you because it is coming in and uh, it doesn't look as if it's going to be easy but it does look to me as if Alice is going to win she can easily uh, battle those stakes off those other ones that are coming in and they, they look like pointed stakes to me. But she's going to dispel them because she's holding the most important wand of all. She is actually holding her own personal wand. And uh, it's that personal, it represents all that personal knowledge, all that personal ability that we build up throughout our lives. So uh, friends, when you get to this stage, don't become uh, despondent and don't feel you've got to give in. Keep on standing your ground and keep on fighting your corner because that's the way forward and that's really what's going to make a difference with everything here. 
Okay. Well, on that note, friends, I'm going to leave it there and uh, crack on. I'll be back soon with more readings. I do little uh, in between. I do astrology forecasts as we go along. Uh, I'll actually be doing one very soon because we've got a new moon coming up on uh, the 24th of January. So uh, I have to do something all about that. I believe that's in Capricorn and uh, that's going to be quite a formative event right at the beginning of, of 2020. We have just also had that great big eclipse situation and we had a, a massive eclipse. Uh, no, we didn't. Yes, we did. We had a solar eclipse in December and a lunar eclipse just a few days ago. Uh, so the moon is waning at the moment, but it's a cycle, you know, and everything we see in the tarot here, in this spread particularly, is about a cycle. Uh, life is a cycle, you know, that's where the beginnings and the endings come in. And that's why the death card doesn't matter anything as like as much as we often think it will, you know, because when a thing dies off, it comes back new again. If we look at the middle card of this spread here, the Page of Pentacles, look at all that uh, beautiful nature symbology there. And there are leaves on the trees. Imagine what those trees would look like without the leaves on. They would, yeah, they can't, they just look different. They have a different look, but it's still nature. And even when things get bare, even when there's nothing going on, we know that the cycle is going to keep turning and there would be leaves on the tree again. The grass would grow again. The grass would grow again and, uh, you know, where things aren't so good, they can be good again. When things are really good, the chances are we're going to have to look back and uh, just decide what exactly went wrong um, and what might be difficult and then do work to make things even better. There's no end to uh, what we can do and there's no end to the cycle because, you know, it goes round in a circle all the time. So keep it real, keep it twig, brother. Thumbs up, please, if you've enjoyed this one. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe, tap that bell so you don't miss anything. Check out my channel. There are now over 600 readings on my channel. Uh, if you're drawn to one of them, doesn't matter if it's not for your star sign. If you're drawn to one of those readings, friends, go and take a look at it. It's important. It matters. 35and83 at gmail.com if you'd like a reading. That is 35and83 at gmail.com. Uh, leave me a comment as well, guys. It's always really good to know who I'm talking to. And it's great to share the journey with you guys. Meanwhile, we're coming up to the weekend as I release this. So have a great weekend. Whenever you're watching this video, have a fantastic year ahead of you. I'm going to say happy January, happy February to come and have a great 2020. I'll be along soon with more readings. Have fun. Peace.